Sadly, Leyland James Corkill died at the age of 13 months in January 2021, a day after suffering brain injuries at the home of Laura and Scott Castle in Barrow, Cumbria. A 38-year-old woman has admitted manslaughter, but denies murder in the case. Ms. Castle's lawyer commented at Preston Crown Court that the horrific killing was not what was ever intended. The court heard that Leyland James moved into the Castle's home in August 2020 by Cumbria County Council's social workers, but the couple struggled to bond with the young boy. On January 6, Mrs. Castle contacted 999 to say that her son had fallen from the sofa, but doctors at Alder Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool were skeptical due to the severity of the injuries he suffered to his internal organs. A panel of three pathologists concluded that Leyland James' extensive bleeding was consistent with the fact that he had been shaken severely and that his head had been banged up against something. During the day of her trial, Mrs. Castle admitted manslaughter and later said to the court that she shook him to stop him crying as she was at her wit's end, and he hit his head on the arm of the sofa as a result. In his closing statement to jurors, Mrs. Castle's lawyer, David McLaughlin QC, said what she did was horrific, killing an innocent baby, but that was not what was ever intended. Mrs. Castle wept in the dock as her lawyer said, like it or not, she will forever be remembered as a baby killer. He said Leyland James, whom she regarded as her son, would probably be walking and talking by now had he lived, but he was not here because of an inept and inadequate Laura Castle. He said the boy had not had the best of starts in his life and, as his main carer Mrs. Castle was there to protect and love him. In addition, he said, she failed to fulfill her basic duty of care towards him. Moreover, she is responsible for his death, he said, stating, it's a shame on her, as her tears in the dock will not bring that little boy back. Lost it but, he said, jurors had to be sure that Leyland James intended serious harm or death to her before they could find her guilty of murder. In the heat of the moment, he asked the jury to consider whether they had ever lost it in the same way that Mrs. Castle had. In Mr. McLaughlin's words, if she had lost it, had reached her wit's end, and at that very moment had shaken her son to death and banged his head on something, at that moment, does she intend to kill or does she intend to cause him serious harm? Mr. McLaughlin asked. A week after they were admitted, he said social workers visited the castle home each week with no concerns expressed at any point. The castles were a couple who wanted children, he said, adding, they wanted to do something positive, so they wanted to adopt. They made weekly visits to the home, with no concerns expressed at any point. McLaughlin referred to texts exchanged between those involved in the dispute, in which Leyland James was branded by his spouse as a vulgar insult, in part because of frustration with her attempts to settle him in with the couple. There were many not pleasant messages sent by Leyland James, which often came during the early morning hours when he frequently cried and Mrs. Castle was alone with him while her husband was at work. The judge also showed the court pictures of the Castles and Leyland James looking happy together and told them that there had been good and bad days. It was Mr. McLaughlin who asked jury members whether they thought Mrs. Castle was a monster or someone who went to great lengths for adoption but, in reality, was overwhelmed, stressed, and unable to cope with it. In his view, they should ask whether she had the makings of a murderer or if she was in fact a failure who was becoming desperate, unhappy, and isolated as a consequence of her husband's frequent work, and was nearly single-handedly raising Leyland James. Mr. McLaughlin said, Scott Castle was working nights, Mrs. Castle, was overwhelmed and she couldn't take it anymore. She just wanted Leyland James, to stop crying. She didn't intend to cause him harm, but what she did caused him the worst sort of harm. Mr. McLaughlin said the Castles were not by their nature bad people, otherwise they would never have gone through the adoption process. He said jurors may not like Mrs. Castle, they may detest, despise, or even pity her, but that did not make her a murderer. Hindsight is a great thing Mr. Castle, 35, denies causing or allowing Leyland James' death, and the couple also both deny two child cruelty charges. In his closing argument, Mr. Castle's lawyer, Simon Keeley QC, said his client was asleep upstairs after a night shift when the boy was fatally injured downstairs. It was Mr. Keeley who told the jury that Mr. Castle was not responsible for Leyland James' death, and jurors should not be tempted to think that he should have done something to save her life. Mr. Keeley stated, it's a lot easier to think Scott Castle should have done something more in hindsight, but that's not to say that hindsight is not valuable. It is important for jurors to judge Mr. Keeley based on what is happening at that time, not what Mr. Keeley says. It has been said that the prosecution pointed to the rude and derogatory messages sent by Mrs. Castle in September 2021 as evidence that Mr. Castle should have been able to detect Leyland James' danger, but the death happened more than three months later, which he said is absolutely critical.
even with the benefit of hindsight, on January 5th, there was no clue or indication of what might happen, as we all now know. A spokesman for the family said they had been under the spotlight for months but, apart from the bonding issue, no social workers or health visitors were concerned and there were no signs that Leyland James had been or would be hurt. The trial continues.